Welcome to this video on the difference between paired end and single end sequencing for genetic information. First, it kind of relies on this principle that if you have more data about your original raw sequencing reads, then it will be easier for you to actually map it to your reference genome and thereby complete a successful alignment. This graph shows three different sizes, 76 base reads, 101 base reads, and 151 base reads. And as you see, as the number of bases increases, as you have longer reads, the percent unmapped decreases. That means you're performing more successful alignment. And this is, again, following that general principle. The more you know, the easier it is to align. And having these longer reads makes it easier to map to your reference genome. This is another graph from a, the paper cited up here, which displays the same thing, but shows how when you compare between 25, 50, 75, and 100 base reads, that the amount which is specifically mapped goes up. So there are still some, it typically the unmapped perhaps stay the same for some of these machines. They use, utilize four different machines, but the number of multi-mapped sets is going down as you increase the reads and their specificity is going up. So again, more data equals better alignment. And so this is the principle behind pair end reads. When you're doing a single end read, it examines it by looking at the DNA going in just one direction and, it, and only from one side. So you get a bunch of singular fragments and then these are individually aligned to your reference sequence. As you can imagine though, if for example you had duplicate spaces on the reference sequence and those duplicate spaces were larger than your read size, if they were 200 kilobases instead of 150 which is your read length, then you can imagine that that fragment, that read, would be aligned to both of the duplicates on the reference sequence. However, paired end reads helps to work around this duplicate issue and look at, on a larger sense, more complex problems or otherwise within the reference sequence or within your actual data. Instead of just sequencing from one side, you can see that it, it will sequence from both sides of the DNA library in different sort of in different steps. It'll first sequence from one side and then sequence from the other. So at the end, you know what the two sequence fragments are from to the degree based on your read length, so whether 100 or 150 base pairs, you'll know that. And you'll know, because of your library size, how far apart these base pairs are, these two fragments are between them. And utilizing that information, you can more easily align it to the reference sequence and thereby get a more accurate account for your data. This is a statement released by Illumina concerning pair end sequencing, and I'll just read, pair end sequencing enables both ends of the DNA fragment to be sequenced because of the distance between because the distance between each paired read is known, alignment algorithms can use this information to map the reads over repetitive regions more precisely. This results in much better alignments for the reads, especially across difficult to sequence repetitive regions of the genome. And as you can see, here's the little diagram schematic for the directionality that I was discussing earlier and how it ultimately gets placed or aligned to that reference genome, whether it's HG38, HG19, or any other wide variety of reference genomes available for a whole host of organisms. Thank you for listening.